Second item under old business. Yeah. Um, Fred, you sent us an email this past week related to the fourteen thousand three hundred and fifty dollar <coughs> encumbrance and suggested um, that we um, void that and take a vote at tonight's meeting to that effect. Well, I, I suggested a number of different avenues to approach it from. Um, at least that was my intention. Uh, and the question was, should it be voided if the board wishes to void it, to vote it? Um, there's obviously a significant pile of material to be accumulated here to be put into the system. So um, the board needs to consider how that should be done, whether it should be done all at once, pieces at a time, wait till the end of the year to see whether or not there are funds left over to do that. Uh, and just do the last two town meetings and get and change the regulations and get that done. So the discussion has opened a number of issues and cases, and I think that needs to be decided by the board uh, to, to allow this to move forward in some sensible manner uh, for perhaps a sum that's less. But you need to discuss it and make a decision. So. I'm but again, in, in your email, yeah, I'll read, unless I hear otherwise, it is my intention to instruct him, meaning Mike Swolzer, to void and have the vote board ratify that next Monday. And we haven't heard otherwise, so so I've done nothing. Okay. Uh, which leaves it in the board's bailiwick to, to do what you think you need to do to <coughs> parse, parse out the, the, the requirements to get the job done at some future point in time or, or to just do town meeting stuff the last two years and change your regulations and worry about the other later in the year. But but I, but I think that what we do that going we forward in 2013 can be independent of whether or not we void the incumbents. Yes. Okay. I mean, the face of the money is, is small in relation to the overall The, the town meeting stuff is so very small. I, I would be in favor of um, Avoiding that encumbrance. I don't know if it's proper, um, given that I made that motion and it essentially failed last night, last time. We don't have to under Robert's rules. So. Okay, so I would make the motion that we void the fourteen thousand three hundred and fifty dollar encumbrance related to general code. I'll second that. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor and against and yep, abstain. I abstain. So we have a two. No, nothing changes. Yeah, nothing changes. So the encumbrance continues forward then. I guess yeah, that's as well, your prior vote continues that, it forward. That brings another question. If, if it's deemed to be an illegal by statute encumbrance, how can we proceed? I don't think it's an illegal encumbrance. That's the problem. It's, it's a we have a contractual obligation with with general code we do yeah i think so and and uh, to some degree and uh, we should do something in the relationship and working with them i didn't think we had a contract yeah i i asked them for an estimate and they indicated them a purchase order would be issued but it got lost in the paperwork and it wasn't done so I thought that that didn't, all this didn't occur until the January 14th meeting. Well, that's not true. Okay. Not true. <laughs> and nobody's asked me about it. That's not true. Okay. Actually, this goes back to last August. Got lost in the pile. So we have a signed legal document that we had in our hands before December 31st. We had an expression to them that we were going to do a purchase order. It got lost in the mix. It lost in the pile. It just wasn't done. So it doesn't exist then? That's not true. If I walk over there and shake your hand and say I'm going to do something or I tell you you're going to do something and, and you're in agreement with that, that's a contractual obligation. Well, you and I agree on that point the way it was in Kansas 100 years ago. It's the way it I is here now. I don't know how it holds up in New Hampshire these days with everybody so so happy. Um, I'm a little confused. I got the impression that we had decided that this would, did not follow the guidelines of the statutes. The board encumbered the money. I know they did. Okay. 
But it doesn't mean I agreed with that. I, I, mean. no, I understand that, but I can't change that. Okay. The board can change it. Okay. I can't. Okay. <clears throat> you answered that question, Mr. Manager. Okay, we took our vote. Third issue related. We have at least two requests to make the legal opinion related to both of these encumbrances, the $100,000 encumbrance and the $14,350 um, encumbrance um, available to the public. I think with everything that's gone on in this, I think that that would be a wise thing to do. I know that the um, town attorney has some concerns as to exactly how we would go about doing that, but I feel that we should find a way to make those um, legal opinions available to the public. Mr. Moore. The issue is uh, releasing to the public um, privileged communication between the board and town council. And I guess I have a problem with the precedent that might be set. Um, the concern being that if we take a piece of paper that was written as a privileged document, in other words, just between our legal counsel and ourselves, and release it to the public, that might change the way that counsel establishes a, a communication with us the next time around not knowing whether it was going to be public or not. And I see no reason in this instance to, um, and perhaps in any instance, to release that, to release that privilege information. It's uh, something that I would prefer that we have that kind of a relationship with counsel, that he can write um, confidential documents to us and intending that it be privileged and that we respect the ability to keep that privilege. So I would, uh, not be in favor of uh, removing that restriction. I understand from an earlier conversation with Mark this afternoon that uh, we do not have that privilege individually. So by a majority vote, it can it can occur. Right. Right. Um, right. So that's uh, yeah. That's all I got on. Mr. Ask a question, Ben, on on your comments. So basically, if if I understood you correctly. Um, you're generally not in favor of releasing, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but any confidential information in principle unless there was some really if it's unusual if it's, I think those were both issued to us with the disclaimer after, you know, in, in, normal, in normal fashion with Attorney Gerald, it's got the, it's that this document is privileged. So yeah, generally I would be against it. Ha has there been <coughs> any, uh, I, I guess I couldn't give you a specific example, but I just seem to recall that from time to time, boards have voted to release confidential in information. Am I remembering that correctly? Or I can't give you a, a specific example, so I may be. Um, I think there was one instance at a uh, town meeting, in respect to a town meeting article, where outside counsel was asked for an opinion, uh, knowing that it would come up at the town meeting, uh, something that could be announced the opinion. So it was, I believe, the understanding of outside counsel that, in fact, that opinion before it was written was something that was going to be released. I've not in my 10 years here had an instance where that I can recall where um, an opinion of mine was, that had been marked confidential and transmitted in that fashion had actually been uh, released, I think, by this board. I think there was something with the planning board at one time mm -hmm. where uh, something I had written was released because it was an unusual situation, but not by this board. Mr. Chairman, may I? <coughs> Would it be right if I suggested in relation to Ben's feelings, which if you have a legal document and there's a lot of comments on there, which there usually are, would it be satisfactory to this board that we don't reveal the document, but just have the attorney, Gerald, reveal his decision on both the 100000 and the 14000 to the public orally tonight? That's a little different. 
All right, just a decision. I'm not, able, I'm not able to come up with a quick answer to that one. I'm, uh, I'm not sure exactly. That's almost as if we're giving... I think... Uh, I'm not an attorney, nor do I express a desire to be one, but... <laughs> I believe I thought I had heard something, and it might have been it might have been um, Attorney Gerald speaking, that if you if you talk about a privileged document enough in public, it somehow loses part of its shield. If I, re I am, am I way off on the left, I'm, left I'm, field I'm, here? It, it, what I'm I'm happy to do rather than summarizing the document is to give the board having studied each of these situations, a bottom line view, which isn't repeating the document. Is that okay in your mind with That's the privilege? Fine. Okay. And that doesn't now, set any precedent that I might, I that I addresses my initial concern? I don't think so with respect to these documents. I don't want this issue to go on any longer than it already has. If that's, uh, if that's something that would uh, uh, satisfy Mr. Gerald did mention to me this evening that he would like to summarize versus go into detail. So, based on that, I would make a motion that we ask Attorney General to issue a summarized version of his opinion, legal opinion, on the hundred thousand and the fourteen thousand three fifty encumbrances. Verbally, verbally, verbally or written. E either way is fine. Well, tonight I'm I'm prepared to. I want to do it verbally. That's act. fine. <coughs> I'll second that motion. You want to take a vote on that, Mr. Chairman? Any further discussion? All those in favor? And abstaining? <laughs> and against. So we have Bill Bean has abstained. And board favor. So you want to go ahead? Yes. Uh, I've considered separately the $100,000 encumbrance that was on the list at one time but is not now, and also the uh, encumbrance of $14,350 that is on the list <coughs> at this point. As to the $100,000 encumbrance, as to each of these, we're dealing with RSA 32 colon 7, which indicates that um, an amount can be carried forward if it has become legally, have, has been encumbered by a legally enforceable obligation prior to the end of the fiscal year. Uh, with regard to the $100,000 encumbrance that is no longer on the list, uh, it is my view that uh, where the Lassard and Sons, which was on the purchase order, had not been communicated with that um, neither the town nor Vila Sard and Sons could enforce against each other the obligation and therefore uh, felt that uh, it should not continue to appear on the list and therefore was taken off. With regard to the $14,350 figure, um, since the last meeting when I was asked a question, I looked into the facts of this <coughs> and as Mr. Welch has said, this situation is different in that there was written communication between Mr. Welch and uh, General Code. As a matter of fact, the, the figure that uh, appeared on the purchase order uh, matched a figure that was on the General Code communication in writing to Mr. Welch. Um, the course of dealing between parties is something else to consider, which is uh, the course of dealing that occurred before the end of the fiscal year. My recommendation on this one was that it's arguable that there was indeed a meeting of the minds before the end of the fiscal year confirmed uh, by earlier communication that could uh, bind the parties. Uh, the exact terms as to actually what would be part of the job had not has not finally been determined but therefore that there is a uh, legally enforceable obligation and it's arguable. So it really is a matter of judgment for the board as to whether this remains on the books. I think it can legally remain on the books or can be taken off either way. 
Can I ask a uh, question on this one? Um, to the 14,350, <coughs> um, was that a, a budgeted item in the budget? And if not, where were we intended to come up with the um, $14,000 out of what location in the budget? It would come out of executive. No, it wasn't budgeted. Um, just like the the, uh, the code proposal budgeted, the board approved that. We had it printed, um, and it was taken out of the um, binding line that's in the, um, the supplies line that's in the um, executive line item. So essentially, the the intention um, was to fund it out of unspent money as we got to the end of the year then yeah okay and and based on the vote tonight and I assume there's not going to be a third one on this issue then you showed at the deliberative session a stack that was roughly about four inches high five, five inches, yeah. with the approval of that encumbrance then you will proceed to to get most or all of that um, done Yes, sir. And and I noticed on their website that they indicate they turn things in about eight weeks or so. Eight to ten weeks is what they had told me. So then, um, to an issue unrelated to the encumbrance or whatever, then we can expect that, particularly with a successful town meeting vote on the renumbering, right. that sometime April, May, sometime in whatever, June or, or July, then we should have an up-to-date, accurate, legal numbering system code for residents to go to. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Moving on to new business.